Welcome to Letterbox Book Club. My name is Claire. And I'm Mackenzie. And with a special guest, Kenzie's son, James. <laughs> yes, James is here to help. <laughs> and today we'll be talking about a series that we've been talking about throughout like the course of the podcast um, of books that we're going to revisit throughout like our childhood slash high school days. So we'll be discussing the House of Night series. Um, and just as a trigger warning, I guess, uh, this series came out in 2007, the first book. Mm -hmm. um, and although it's not an excuse, but there are some uh, politically incorrect statements and uh, slurs that we won't be saying, but just if you read the book. Yeah, it's just used freely just within the dialogue and the language and obviously those kind of ideas and values, you know, we don't agree with. And there's also some problematic themes that are kind of just brushed over, but we will discuss them as well. Yeah, let's just say if this book was released like two days ago, it would be cancelled or it probably yeah. would have never even made it that far in publishing. So yes. there's a bit that's a bit of an overview of, of that. So, so that's fun. <laughs> and as per usual, Kenzie will kick us off with the blurby blurb. So I'll start with Marked, the first book. I could feel his touch through our eyes. I couldn't look away from him. The girl in front of him seemed to disappear, and all there was in the hallways was him and me and the sweet, beautiful smell of his blood. Sixteen-year-old Zoe loses everything when she is marked as a vampire. Her flaky best friend, a boyfriend who drinks too much, and a stepfather who had torn her family apart. Instead, she gains a place at the House of Night, the mysterious vampire finishing school she will attend for the next four years, if she survives. And what better reason to survive and develop her intriguing new powers than Eric Knight, the gorgeous sixth former Zoe is irresistibly and dangerously drawn to. This book series is amongst like the peak vampire theme. Because like ever since like Twilight, vampires yeah, Twilight, seem to pop vampire off. Academy. Yeah, vampires seem to just, or vampire fantasy just seem to pop off. And this is definitely no exception. So yeah, it talks a lot about like Eric a bit more deeply in the blurb, which I found he, him to be quite irrelevant <laughs> throughout the majority of this book. The boy is a walking red flag. <laughs> he is, he is. It, like, does nothing. A lot of it is off screen, especially in the second book, but we'll get to that bit off screen shit. Yeah. Anyway. Thoughts, feelings, emotions, Kenzie? Um, when I first read this, I was in high school and I loved it. I loved everything about it. It was vampires, it was sexy, it was saucy, it was uh, my age group. So yeah, I think I read this when I was 16 and I was like, damn, I was well into it. Now, looking back as an adult and reading it, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot. I, oh, I don't know, I still enjoy it. I think there are a lot of themes, yeah, like if it was written in this age, this time, it, it would be cancelled. And I, yeah. There's also a lot of books. There's what, 12 main story books. There's a few novellas yeah. as well. And yeah, there's small books there, 350-ish pages. But there's a lot of content. Yeah, a lot of content, a lot of world building, a lot of... And I, I found, even though we'll talk about this also probably in the second one, but there's just a lot of repeating of things. Like, they'll yeah. say a character, then they'll be like, oh, this is the character, she is this title, and she goes by this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like, there's always... Yeah, it's just, like, keeping... Like, reinforming the reader of, like... And I think I do find mean. that in other books that I've been reading, that, you know, when you get to the next book, they reinforce the idea of who someone is. And I mm. get that you have to do it because if someone just picks up the second book or whatever, but yeah, there is a lot of um of that repetition of of uh, telling people who people are. Yeah. But yeah, that's good. Probably just as you said, like, if they're just flicking through. But I think the second book was also released in 2007, so like, really? Should you I need to... even, like, the first three or something might have been. Yeah. It? Cool. My thoughts, feelings, emotions. This, as I was reading it, it gave me, like, vampire fantasy Mean Girls vibes. Yeah. <laughs> like, just everything about it, it I just looked, it was just Mean Girls. Everything down to a T, and now I can't unsee it. As a, yeah, probably, yeah, 15, 16 year old, like, I thought this was a great book because, yeah, it's fantasy, it's vampires, everything that you just said. Looking back now, yeah, it is quite juvenile, but... Obviously, yeah. younger me loved it, and now I'm just like, oh, why'd you say that? Why you say it like that? And I also find as well reading these books, these sort of books now, that I, I'm like, I find I find it hard because I just think about how the characters are teenagers. Yeah. And sure, I was doing some questionable things as a teenager, but then I just think about what these characters are all doing, and sometimes I'm just thinking about how. In, even in a fantasy world, it's a bit much. 
For example, uh, the sexual relation. Yeah. But yeah, stuff like that. They really do hone in on, like, teenage drinking as well, because obviously yeah. Zoe's ex, not so ex-boyfriend Heath, yeah, it's been said that he has, like, alcohol issues, but it's like, why should a 16-year-old yeah, have alcohol 16, issues? Yeah, And I find as well that it's a very Americanized uh, trope as well, like, always that they're drinking at parties and stuff, like, over-drinking, and, like, they're yeah. always drinking beer. Uh, I know I underage drank. <laughs> Yeah. But I never drink beer. No, beer is the least tasteful thing on this earth. Yeah. And plus, it's not as alcoholic compared to other, like, spirits and more yeah. colourful, stereotypical girly drinks. That shit fucks you up. Yeah. Being wine drunk is a whole new level. <laughs> Yeah, so shall we get into a little bit of the plot? Or? I, th I think even with this, we can just, like, smash through the plot. That yeah. could probably take up most of the episode. Yeah. But I must say, before we yeah, dig into it, the beginning of the book is so fucking dramatic. <laughs> From the get-go, it's bam, it's bam, it's bam. Yeah. I loved it, but it was quite uh, overwhelming. Yeah. Zoe heads to school one day. She's actually feeling yeah. a little crook. She's been coughing. And then, yeah. like, just bam, she was marked by a vampire tracker. And yeah. all hell ensues, and her life has changed forever. I do enjoy uh, those stories like this where the vampire, like everything, the law is already just part of um, society. Like it's not like yeah. you get marked and it's a secret society and you get dragged away and it's just, oh no, Zoe's gone off to boarding school. It's like, no, there's vampires, they go off to the vampire school. Yeah, like it's acknowledged and it's, yeah, part of the world, but doesn't mean there's room for discrimination or anything, yeah. which... I know I just said that it's, it's quite overwhelming that everything just like it goes bam 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 but it's actually quite nice it's concise it's like yeah it gets to that point yeah so Zoe she's marked she goes home tells her parents her mum and her stepdad yeah that's right they're assholes of course yeah because they're religious <laughs> I, yeah just the theme of religion and all that as well like yeah. the conflict and it's like it's also very real world very yeah. real world themes of discrimination and holier than thou attitudes yeah because I think the stepfather is, oh, what do they call, I forget now, people of faith or something? Mm, like which is that, yeah, like, yeah, head priest or whatever. And, like, he's calling for, like, a prayer circle from everyone else. Yeah. Cause... It screams um, FLDS to me. I don't even know what that is, but. No, I don't know. Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints, which are Mormons. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Zoe doesn't have the best relationship with her parents, like, yeah, the mother has a kind of change of attitude since she's been with her husband now, which is really sad and disappointing to, like, prioritise a lover over your child. Mm. But again, I feel like that's such a real world. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Mm. Yeah, but I don't know, it just made me sad because, you know, obviously this whole process, Zoe is absolutely fucking terrified and she doesn't know what to do and she wants to go to the house of night because that's where yeah. she needs to be now. But the mum yeah. is not doing anything, no one's doing anything or yeah. being practical about it. So she goes to her grandma's house. Yep. Who she does have a really great relationship with and um, it is, there is that big theme of um, her grandma is Cherokee. Also, I don't know if we're allowed to say Cherokee or if we need to say Native American. We'll just let's just go Native American from here on okay, out. Okay, cool. Yeah. So her just as an just as just as an acknowledgement. Yeah, I don't want to offend anyone. Cherokee heritage, Native American. Mm. And I'm sure if we had learnt that history, that it would hit more on the topic as well. But a lot of the themes are about um yeah Native American traditions and spirituality, spirituality and their connection to the land. Which is fantastic. Yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, so she goes to her grandma's. Also, just real quick, it just it just shows, like, I know we'll get to the friend group later, but, like, mm. it's quite a pro oddly progressive, yet not so progressive book. Yeah. It's, it's such like a the diversity, weird... The diversity is amazing, yeah. but then the way they address the diversity... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a weird juxtaposition in itself. It's so funny. Oh, it's not funny, but, you know, it's just... When you think about it, it's just weird. But yeah, sorry, go on, go on, Kenzie. Goes to her grandma's, but on the way she feels sick or she she's at her grandma's lavender farm and she falls and hits her head and she has a vision. <laughs> yes, a very real life or death situation. This is like the third yeah. thing that goes bam, right? Yeah. As this happens. And it turns out Zoe is met with like the vampiric goddess herself, Nyx. Yeah. And they have like a touching moment and I think she like 
I don't know if she says anything. I can't really recall, but they might have a. She might have a brief conversation with her, and then she kisses her forehead, which is commonly where young fledgling vampires get marked. And then after that literal fever dream that she has, um, <laughs> she wakes. She wakes up in the house of night. Yeah. I just want to talk about the law really quickly with the vampires. So, sure. uh, vampires get marked, so they get an outline of a crescent moon on their forehead, and those are called fledgling vampires. And then after the four years at the house of night, uh, they go through the change, um, and they get their mark ends up coloured in. And from that, they can get intricate tattoos around their face and down their arms, etc. That's usually like related to their personality. However, after Zoe is kissed or touched on the forehead in her fever dream, uh, instead of having an outline of a crescent moon, she has a filled in crescent moon. So that means she is special and not like other girls. Of course. <laughs> I really liked, because this gives off chosen one vibes yeah. and chosen one themes and I, I love it. Mm. Except when, how she accomplishes everything in like a month of being there. That pisses me off, but still, yeah. chosen one, we love it. And so, yeah, she wakes up in the house of night in with the comfort of her grandmother, Sylvia Redbird, I think. Yeah. Um, and we are met with the high priestess of the house of night. Is it Neferet? Yeah. I see. Why, the way I initially like spelt it out, I thought it was like Neferet. Neferet. <laughs> but, but there was, um, <laughs> Neferet. <laughs> But there was no extra E, so Nefret. And she is described as like this, you know, incredibly beautiful woman preset priestess that just yeah. eludes a lot of power, element of mystery about her. I don't care. I have a big fat crush on Nefret. Leave me yeah. alone. <laughs> and it ch turns out that she has chosen Zoe, or taking Zoe on as her mentor. Yeah. Well, she's becoming a mentor for Zoe. Yeah, because every fledgling kind of has like a teacher that is their mentor. Yeah. So when does that subside, like, when they're in their fourth year? Because it never, because it never really gets talked about. Yeah. But yeah, cool. And essentially, Nefret is just, just explains, like, kind of what, what goes on about in the House of Night. Their school yeah. times are the opposite, so they, their, like, morning classes are, like, 9pm. Yeah. It took me so long to figure out, even as, as a teenager and then rereading, they're backwards because I was just thinking, I'm like, there's not enough time. And then because I think I was going by a 12 hour clock and not a 24 hour clock. Yeah, so I was thinking I would go, okay, so they go from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. And then I was thinking when they get back to their dorms or whatever, like, okay, so maybe you stay up till about 9 a.m. and then you sleep. And then I was thinking that 3 p.m. again. I was just like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, I just couldn't figure it out. <laughs> but yeah, then I figured it out. I was like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. <laughs> yep, so Zoe's world is flipped completely upside down. Upside down. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Grandmama has to go. And yeah, I just love her relationship with her grandma because she is that like humbling soul, that person that Zoe can go to for any questions and kind of like the mother she would have always kind of wanted as well. Mm. It's like, because you have someone like Zoe's grandma, and you think, how did Zoe's mum turn out the way she is, you know? Yeah, and then uh, that's what I was going to say, I always love relationships like that, where there's no relationship with the mum, but then with the granddaughter, there yeah. is. But then I think it all goes back to uh, her stepdad, John. Yeah, for sure, in his influence and bit of power, I guess. So yeah, then Zoe, um, Nefert was going to send Zoe to a dorm, but I think something came up, so Zoe went on a little walkabout, and... Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot as yeah. a teenager there was a literal blowjob scene. Oh my yes. god. In this book. Jesus Christ. Also with not so good themes about it. So Zoe encounters yeah, a, a young blonde fledgling not or vampire fledgling, I don't know. Yeah, they're both fledglings still. Yeah, um in the act of a blowjob. Well, I don't know if is she in the act or is she just on her knees trying to get the penis out? <laughs> I think <laughs> I just call it the blowjob scene, whether or not it happens. Yeah, or not. I think it so. was an attempted, and that's it's a very uh, sexual assaulty vibes of it. Yes, because although we don't know this at the time, but it's Eric Knight, and he's being like, "No, I don't want to do this. Like, we're yeah. not together anymore." Blah blah blah. And then obviously Aphrodite at the time we didn't know. She's yeah. all like, "Oh, you're mine forever," type of thing, very possessive. And then yeah, I think only Eric manages to lock eyes with Zoe as an acknowledgement, but then Zoe just like backs away because she's mm. brand new. Also, it must be said that Nefra is extremely intrigued by Zoe just because of her mark to being fully coloured in as well. Yeah. So, 
So then Zoe meets her her new uh, roommate, which is Stevie Ray Johnson, which she is a young Texan woman. I love her twang as well. Mm -hmm. It's just so, like, just thinking about how she says things is just so funny. So essentially, once Zoe meets her roommate, her roommate kind of, you know, introduces her to her friend group and everything. So another character... A lot of characters that we interact with throughout this book are obviously Stevie Ray Johnson. We have Erin, we have Shawnee, we, and we have Damien. That's their main friend group. And then we have kind of like the opposing friend group, which is the Dark Daughters, Dark Sons, which makes up of Aphrodite and her hooligans. And yeah, Aerith, they're kind of, of the like hierarchy of the school. They're kind of the prefects. They lead all yeah. the rituals and stuff. Yeah, and that's so the social hierarchy screams American as well. Uh huh. Like, with, with the sophomore freshman thing yeah. and the scene. So they're, they're essentially, yeah, the seniors. But then, because you think about it, so there's always 16 when she goes. Yeah. But then she's there for four years. Yeah, 21. Oh, okay. So 20. So do you stay till you're 20 or, or yeah. 19? Or, because if it is, it like 16 first year, 17. 18, 19. Maybe it's since you've been marked. Because it never really explains, like, on your 16th well, year. But I think you... you get marked in your 16th year. I'm not sure. I don't because know. Because otherwise, what if there's, like, 11-year-olds running around with 16-year-olds? I don't know, though. <laughs> I think it's it, got, it has to be something to do with 16, because Americans love 16. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And then that made me realise, yeah, Aphrodite would be, like, what, 18-ish? Yeah. 18, 19? And, like, she's an absolute bully. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's all she is. And of course, throughout this process, everyone is staring and like gawking at Zoe because of her filled in mark because she is uh-huh. special. She's special. Aphrodite is extra upset because uh, she is, uh, Nefret is her mentor and Ef- Nefret used to be Aphrodite's mentor. So there's a hint of like jealousy. Yeah. And Aphrodite, sorry, Aphrodite has a vision. She can tell that she gets like visions of the future. So yeah. she thought she was touched by Nyx as well. So she's extra jealous. So sometimes as a vampire, you can get like special abilities like you can read minds or you can heal, I guess, or you like, I don't know, have- or you can have affinities for elements. So so earth, wind, fire, water, and spirit. So yeah, and they're just classed as like gifts from the goddess. Yeah, it, it's a, such an honor to have been like, quote unquote, like touched by Nyx in that type of way. Yeah, Aphrodite is a high priestess in training, considering yep. yeah she's at like a seniority of her fledgling stage. But of course, potential. There's still like what yeah eleven books to go. Like she <laughs> might not even make it. Yeah, the chain because she could just her body could just reject at any point. Yeah, your body can reject the change. Honestly, because I, I was thinking about this before the potty we started. I was like, imagine you go through the four years, you think you're in the clear, and at the very last hurdle, you, you're yeah. done. <laughs> Good yeah. night. Yeah, oh, it would be such a shame. But yeah, so Aphrodite has like extra intentions for Zoe just due to her being special and she seems to hold Nefrit's favour already considering she's been here for five minutes. Yes. <laughs> And so most of the book, yeah, it's just about really going through the motions of school life. Zoe's adjusting to to her classes and her schedules, meeting new people, meeting new professors. But a lot of the the book's main focus is leading towards the first full moon ritual and the Sawan ritual towards the end, which I think we, we might spend some more time talking about that. But also, of course, throughout the book, there are two fledglings that die. So that gives us, shows us the process of grieving and like what the actual protocol is in the House of Night for that. Yeah. So we have this random girl, Elizabeth. (laughs) (laughs) Elizabeth, no last name. Exactly. Oh, and that's another thing. Like, as soon as you enter the House of Night, you can like change your name to whatever you want. It's great. Um, Gives me divergent vibes as well. But like, this was before. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Veronica Roth, we know where you got this idea. (laughs) But yeah, Elizabeth, no name, she dies, although Zoe doesn't witness it, but Stevie Ray Johnson does. Yeah. And everyone's quite shocked with how, like, the teachers react, because you act like nothing happens, because it's just yeah. a part of the process. Yeah, you just move on. It's like, people die. As a vampire, do you, like, live immortal? I'm or is not like sure a- if it's immortal, but you have, like, extended life. Okay. Yeah. And then another kid, oh, we'll talk about Elliot dying later. We can talk now. Also, the House of Night is overrun with cats, which is a fun little quirk. Yes. Because apparently just cats and vampires seem to have a nice, yeah, a nice companionship. Yeah, and cats choose you to be their owners. Exactly. See, we really are 
are slaves to cats after all. Yeah. Even if you're a supernatural vampire. But yeah, and you can have an affinity towards cats, which I'm not sure what that really... I don't know if you can communicate with cats. I mean, or yeah, maybe you control, can communicate with them better. Or if they're like just drawn to you. Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty cool. There was also a moment where Heath and Kayla, which is Zoe's human friends, they come and visit. And Zoe drinks a little bit of Heath's blood. Yeah. And she Which it. it's yeah, it's saying that like you're not meant to fledglings sometimes illegally partake in the drinking of blood, but you're not meant to really have the uh bloodlust until you're changed. Yeah. But Zoe has it. Although now that I remember this was triggered because the dark da- the the dark daughters had their full moon ritual and there yes. was fledgling blood in the wine and Zoe was yes. able to taste it and it was Elliot's blood and Elliot is a sick fl- is like it, it's revealed later that he was sick but like yeah. it's very easy writing so like once you hear see like a character's like begins coughing a lot or is noticed yeah. you're like alright that dude's gonna like die, die soon <laughs> like it's all good because I noticed that with a certain character in number two but we'll talk yes. about that and also, yeah, just back to the hierarchy real quick. Like, the Dark Daughters, a lot of, like, the loser kind of folk or, like, the nerdy yeah. people, they get used as this thing called refrigerators, which is a very demeaning term, <laughs> which is when they, yeah, offer up, well, not, well, I guess, forcefully offer up their blood for yeah. these rituals. Even though, like, the blood isn't re- necess- isn't necessary at all, I don't think. Mm, no. It's just the wine. They're, because they want to try and emulate the adult uh, rituals. Yeah. Which where you do drink human blood, but they say they get it donated through the blood bank, so. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot more ethically sourced human blood. I just also as well, while we're talking about the Dark Daughters and, daughters and Sons and stuff, I feel like in the first book, and even this, a few of the books, there's so many characters that are introduced that kind of become irrelevant later on. Like Aphrodite's two friends, yeah. who were mentioned maybe a handful of times. Yeah. And then they're never mentioned again. Yeah. And it's sort of like, just acknowledge that she has these two friends and it's, oh, Aphrodite and her clique. But I don't need their names, really. I don't need their backstory. Yeah. If you're just going to write them out. I suppose it's hard when you're trying to build a huge universe kind of like this. Yeah. You just, yeah, try to implement everything. Everyone gets a little moment to say something. but Yeah. And then I think as well, because it's written by two people... Yeah, it's a mother-daughter combo. It's yeah. Like a teenage daughter helped. I completely forget who the authors are, but... PC oh. and Kristen Cast. Yep, there we go. Thank you, Kenzie. <laughs> You're welcome. It's only because I have the books right in front of me. Yeah, see, I had, no, I had, had did not have it written down. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, But, yeah. All right. Maybe we're just thinking how to go about this kind of chronologically. You know what? Yeah. Let's I don't think we need to go about it chronologically. All right. Back to Heath and Kayla, then. Um, trying to quote unquote bust her out. Yeah. <laughs> and Zoe's trying to explain to them like she's stuck there now. And I got confused when I was reading the second book more so. Um, I got confused with the whole kind of legality or the the mortality of them and their relationship with like the House of Night and like how far they can go. Yeah, so dying. I think, yeah, I'm not sure if they die or if they just get sick and then, like, eventually die, but I don't think if it's, because I think in the second book, uh, Zoe goes to Starbucks and stuff during the day. Yeah. And she goes to the mall, so she can leave. I think it's if you're away for an extended period of time, because fledgling vampires need to be around adult Adults. vampires. Yeah. But I suppose Kayla and Heath don't know that, so she's trying to kind of trick them, like, I'm here forever, leave me alone. Yeah. Um, and obviously Heath is like, no, I love you. It's like, it's very teenage juvenile, I love yeah. you, but like, you don't know what love is. Yeah. And you drink and get high all the exactly. time. Exactly. Yeah, okay, you love me, but you're not willing to change for me. Yeah. Again, you're 16, you shouldn't be having these issues. But also, as a 16-year-old, um, I was dating a boy, and he was older than me, and he was talking about how he was moving to Canada, and I definitely said, uh, I'll wait for you. <laughs> 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 and also that's okay i'm not gonna say the cringe that i did say but i implied that i would also go to canada for him <laughs> oh, no, so Kenzie. i get it in the teenage yeah yeah oh my god yeah. you know him i forgot what? yeah what hang on i'm gonna hang on <laughs> who do i know that's moved to canada as far as i know well they're not currently still there but oh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was very really? hushed. Yeah. Jesus, Kenzie. We had a whole thing for ages. It was oh, very hush hush. You sly dog. 
Anyway, but yeah, so I definitely understand being a teenager and being in those really big emotions and stuff, but it is very funny reading it as an adult. Yeah, yeah. It's sure. hilarious. <laughs> And then, yeah, something happens and Heath has a cut or something. And then, yeah, Zoe yeah. is compel compelled to the bloodlust again. Bloodlust yes. isn't supposed to occur until later on. But, of course, Zoe is the special chosen one, so she gets to do whatever the fuck she wants. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she commits illegal act and starts drinking a little bit. And then Kayla sees it and freaks the fuck out. As she she thinks that she's always trying to kill. <laughs> yeah, and so Kayla runs away and then she tells Heath to kind of stop. Yeah asking her to like because he's all like oh it's okay like i'm getting my girlfriend back like this is all for the greater good yeah and then yeah he so in a i know it's not like a compulsion but like he does stop when zoe tells him to yeah and he ends up going home but then yeah heath has been different ever since yeah just want to quickly touch on that they do have imprinting in this universe yes. as well so we all we don't need to reiterate what imprinting means but it is just when a fledgling or vampire like feast feeds on a human like there's that risk and yeah he becomes like a bit kind of dopey about it but like anyway he's on his way home and then of course eric shows up yes eric knight the most blandest character i've ever met in my life yes <laughs> like this is the original love triangle setup like we've got <laughs> eric versus heath yes who's it gonna be but like again it's a pretty short book in comparison they're trying to get get through a lot of things i don't see there was much relationship development between the two of them mm. anyway it's just like i will walk you home and we'll just talk a little bit have yeah. like ex existential talks here and there yeah suddenly you're in love like <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so that's how their relationship starts to bloom, and of course there's this whole conflict even with Aphrodite, because uh, Eric and Aphrodite used to go out, and he is adamant that they are over, but Aphrodite has other ideas. Let's talk about the first full moon ritual, because I think this is a pivotal kind of moment early in the book, because Zoe's been there for like a hand, not even probably a week, or this whole book she's been in there for less than a month. Yeah, I was going to say, are we going to talk about the timeline? <laughs> Yeah, let's quickly why not so the whole yeah as you said this, this whole book she uh has been at the house of night for less than a month and like yeah chosen one vibes yeah chosen one ritual becoming i'm just gonna spoil it becoming leader of the dark daughters like offering change it's like uh, and it's all because yeah of her mark being different and yeah. her being kind of like a very excelled fledgling yes so yeah, the full moon ritual is just a thing they do like every like month or any time there's a full moon. They just have a ritual in order to like... On a nyx. On a nyx, yep. And also just like the elements as well. And it's actually quite a nice ceremony when I read it. Um, yeah. Although I'm getting... I do get kind of confused with like just visualizing it and like the placements of everybody and like the dance movements and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but it is such a cool kind of, yeah, honoring ceremony. Um, and Nefrit is kind of in charge she is summoning all the elements and every time an element is summoned zoe feels a sensation towards that particular element and it turns out she has an affinity for all five elements because of course she does because she's a chosen one she is special she is different and she keeps it a secret from nefrit as well because a lot of the times throughout the book zoe turns to nefrit for like advice because nefrit is her mentor yeah. But she also has a little voice in her head that sometimes says, like, no, like, don't say anything. Yep. So, obviously, being touched by the goddess, um, Zoe is honing in on that type of wisdom, and which just shows, it gives you a sense that Nefrit is untrustworthy, but I don't care. Nefrit's gorgeous. <laughs> Nefrit's hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Mommy? Sorry. Mommy? Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. And even, like, throughout the book, like, sometimes Nefret would be, like, you know, sweet and mothering and just, like, a fierce woman. And then might a tone might be clipped every now and then. And Zoe's like, oh, I don't like this Nefret. But... Yeah. And it can just come across as uh, just an adult. Just Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. no, like, you're not meant to be sweet and innocent, like, yeah. mentor the entire time. Like, it's okay to have other emotions and feel angry and be angry. Yeah. But I suppose, yeah. I suppose when it comes to, you know, speaking towards students and stuff, you know, you have to be just, like, calm and well-tempered, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, the full moon ritual, success. It was fantastic. The Dark Daughter. The Dark, yeah. So there's a whole school uh, ceremony, and then there's uh, the Dark Daughters do their own, like, private yeah. one. And Aphrodite is only inviting Zoe because she's special and because, again, she has a connection with Nefret now, and Aphrodite yeah. is jealous. And obviously that, it, it's, it goes all right up to the point when Zoe starts drinking the, out of the goblet, and it has, obviously, Elliot's blood in it. Yeah. 
But I just loved the whole, like, reading both rituals. It's very Chanel versus Walmart. <laughs> you know, yes. the, the, the adult yeah. ceremony. Like, she, like, Aphrodite is Nefrit from Wish. Like, yeah. <laughs> in that whole thing. And it was, just, it was just so funny. And Zoe does talk about how, uh, like, clearly Aphrodite is trying to imp uh, impersonate Nefrit's yeah. uh, ritual leading style. And it does come yeah. across as just, um, yeah, she's, she's doing it. it. It says she's doing it very ho-like. Yeah. But I don't agree with that terminology, so... No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with the way Aphrodite leads the uh, the ceremony, like, she's more demanding the elements to come to her to be blessed, whereas I think with Nefrit as well, it's more of a suggestion, or it's more of a, it's a very polite way to, to call on the elements, where Aphrodite is like, come to me, you know, exhibit your power, you know, guide us. It's very It's a very selfish way to bless Nyx, whereas, yeah, I, I guess in another way to say, a Nefrit is more of a, yeah, like a nice way to go about it. And then, I think those were the t one of the two main moments throughout the book. Also, Zoe encounters Elizabeth's quote-unquote ghost, and Elliot's quote-unquote ghost, and we all know what they are. They're zombies, come with the red eyes and the growling and the disgustingness. Ugh. Yes. But it's just, yeah, but yeah, it's so funny. It's like they keep calling them ghosts. It's like, but they're not ghosts. Surely you've heard oh, of zombie she, media. She, I know, but she doesn't know. Yeah, I know. She's like, you're meant to be dead. If you think there's, like, I would, wouldn't believe for a second they didn't think there were other type of supernatural creatures out there. Like, come on. But I guess it is the way it is. So yeah, Zoe has a couple of encounters with that. So she has that plaguing on her mind. And throughout the book as well, or ever since feeding on Heath's blood, Heath has been incessantly contacting Zoe, yep. um, needing to talk, saying I love you, blah blah blah. Saying how much how he'll change. Yep, and obviously, um, I think even after talking to Eric, um, he suggests go talk to Nefrit and about it, and so she yeah. does, and Nefrit is quite, you know, disappointed, but like, this new fledgling hasn't been here for like two weeks, and like, she doesn't know yeah, anything. and also, that's what I was thinking, that she's always, oh, it's disappointing, blah blah blah, but then you, you haven't explained anything to her. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose she's I supposed like to learn all this yeah, in the sociology but surely classes. surely when you start, surely you get a little handbook, fledgling 101. <laughs> yes, yes. That explains, you know, don't feed off a human because this will happen. Yeah, but yeah, um, so Nefret just says just stay away from each other and the if there was an imprint it should just naturally fade due to the distance and also i think just in case i forget what exactly prompts this but uh zoe is wanting to do a purification type of ceremony as well just for herself which is also a part of like the the native american spirituality that her grandma tells her and all that type of stuff as well oh yep 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 she just wanted to cleanse yeah but we love that. I just love just reading like the spirituality and stuff because I know we kind of dabble. We dabble ish. Yeah. Not, well, you more so than me, but yeah, it's just so fun to read and also to kind of learn. I don't know how accurate that Native American kind of like you know like the smudge stick thing. Don't know if it's like accurate, but I if it is, like it'd be pretty cool. Pretty accurate. And so yeah, that happens, and Zoe brings her friends along as well because. You know, through the power of friendship, anything is possible. <laughs> I love it. It's the friends we make along the way. And is this where she kind of discovers that she has an affinity for the elements? Uh, that It was during the, um, during the first full moon ritual, but she does use it now to kind of enhance this ritual, I think. Oh no, this was before it, uh, Elliot dying, but oh well, doesn't matter. Just the I think it's just Elizabeth's ghost slash spooky vibes. So yeah, that's a success. The power of friendship, it's fantastic. Zoe probably feels a bit better. And then another, like, main point of the book is the Samhain ritual, which is, you know, honouring, which is a way to honour the spirits of the dead as well as Nyx I think, herself. Yeah, because it's a book with the spirits of the dead, I think um, that is, like, on Halloween. Yeah, yeah, it's where yeah, the veil... The idea of the timeline. And it's the, like the veil of where the um the living and the dead are at its most thinnest. Obviously, it's still celebrated. It's a real yeah holiday, and it's celebrated through whatever spirituality follows it, which is pretty cool. And but for this ritual, the dark daughters and sons are allowed to kind of do this 
out in the real world, like, away from the House of Night. Which is pretty funny as well, because, like, you look at the hierarchy and it's like, yeah, because they're the seniors, they're allowed, allowed to get away with this sort of, like, hooligan behaviour. Because ideally, they're meant to just, like, yeah, chill around the House of Night. But anyway, Aphrodite begins the ritual and she is starting to get a bit, like, possessed by the spirits as well. Yes, because, uh, they're using... Aphrodite, uh, has a smudge stick. And yeah. she's like trying to cleanse the area, but Zoe is mentioning, you know, in her mind that they're using the wrong herb or whatever. They should be using lavender or something instead of whatever. So yeah. instead of cleansing the area, she essentially has opened the area to the dead. Yeah, to the spirits. And she herself is like seemingly getting possessed. And then of course, Heath rocks up because of being out and about. His imprint on Zoe, or his imprint with Zoe is still quite strong. So, or unless he was drunk and he stumbled upon them. I don't know. I think way. he was drunk and he was just walking about, but I think because of the bond, it kind of like led him. <sighs> the bond. Love that yeah. word. <laughs> uh, and so then Aphrodite turns to turns on Heath and is like, you are going to be their sacrifice. Yeah. Love that. Don't I'm love going that. to eat you. Um, nom, nom, nom. Exactly. Good and so the spirits are now trying to attack Heath and the rest of Aphrodite's like inner circle themselves, like they're holding, keeping the circle at bay. But then they start to abandon her when things are going awry. Mm. And of course, Zoe's friends are all there. They knew about the a plan and everything. And so they managed to hold onto the circle together and mm. to stop the spirits. And Zoe is in charge of leading that, ultimately saving everybody's life and saving Heath's life, more importantly. Mm -hmm. um, and then Nefret ends up rocking up and is like, well done, Aphrodite, you can fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> And so, with that, as a reward, Zoe is now the leader of the Dark Daughters and Sons. And I think after this moment, she has gained tattoos around her yeah, face. Yeah, part of her tattoo, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think it's more towards, like, accomplishments and recognition of gifts. Yeah. More so than, like, and also, I guess, their personality. So, of course, the Chosen One has become even more special. <laughs> Which is just the way it should be, you know? And this is all happening within a, a few weeks, like... Yeah, this is, like, three weeks in. <laughs> yeah, god damn. And then, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for the House of Night. For the first one, marked. Unless there's anything else. I think we've gone through them all. Yeah. All the main point, main plot points. And then, of course, Eric and Zoe. Oh, yeah. Their boyfriend-girlfriend yeah. now. Their Just boyfriend, like that. boyfriend Three weeks. No date. Three. No dates. <laughs> and, yeah, Aphrodite is kicked to the curb. She was kicked to the curb at the start of the book, but... Yeah. So I think that might be it for Marked. Yeah. So thanks for listening. Uh, keep an ear out for the second book, Betrayed, and we'll continue the story moving forward. I'm looking forward to it. Like, yeah, I know we complain about, like, the juvenile language and everything's happening so fast, but, like, you're just keen to keep reading and seeing where it goes. And, yeah, because they are short books, it's really easy to keep going. Yep. All right, thanks for listening. Check us out on our social media. If you find us somewhere, you'll find us everywhere. But Letterboxd Book Club, Spotify, Instagram, TikTok, the world is your oyster. Alrighty, thanks. Bye. Bye.